Hi, I'm David Simmons. I'm here in the caffeinated Bitstream Automotive Testing Laboratories, aka my garage, to demonstrate the pros and cons of the stereo head unit I recently installed in my car. It's a Kenwood KDC BT 952HD. It's basically Kenwood's latest N dash single DIN head unit that supports both Bluetooth and HD radio. Uh, it was pretty easy to install. Like many stereos, it has a removable faceplate. You can pop it off, put it back on. Just uh, go ahead and power it up here. Uh, there were a few key points that sold me on this particular unit, such as uh, connectors in the back. Uh, this unit has USB and 3.5 millimeter connectors in the back, so I can neatly route wires behind the trim of the dash and avoid a gaudy mess of wires sticking out of the stereo. A Bluetooth. I wanted an easy, frictionless way to listen to podcasts while out running errands. Uh, without having to hook up a device to cords and adapters every time I get in the car. And finally, HD radio. I don't listen to radio much, but come on, it's 2012. I may not have my flying car or robot servant, but at least I can listen to digital radio. Well, let's talk about Bluetooth. How well does Bluetooth work with this stereo? Uh, it actually works great with my phone, which is a Galaxy Nexus, with one exception. After cranking the car, it takes about 30 seconds to connect with the phone. So if I hop in the car and fire up a podcast, it actually plays out of the phone speaker for 30 seconds before the stereo picks it up. Outside of that annoyance, Bluetooth works pretty smoothly. Play a song and I can use the uh, head units, use the head units controls to pause playback. Uh, start it playing back again. Uh, and change tracks. Next track. It also comes with this uh, nifty remote control here. <laughs> You're right, who uses a remote control to uh, when they're driving around? Just get rid of that. Uh, by the way, I love this uh, Beyond Pod app for Android. Uh, it automatically downloads fresh episodes of my favorite podcast, so I can always listen to something interesting. Um, let's see what we have here. Oh. Um, it pauses playback when I turn off the car, and its usability and functions are miles ahead of Google Listen. Let's go yes. pause that. Like many Bluetooth-enabled stereos, uh, this one does support a hands-free uh, phone system, so you can use a, an external microphone that comes with the, the stereo to uh, to make phone calls. Or I'll call myself. We'll see you how that works. You have no new messages. To place a call, press 2. Or to change your settings, press oh. 4. Hang up. This head unit can also play MP3s from CD-ROMs and USB sticks. Uh, I hear it can also play regular music CDs if you're old enough to remember those. I, I do have a USB stick plugged into the unit, uh, so I can go ahead and change over to USB and we can see how that works. Oops, there it went. Whoa. Yeah, volume levels. Uh, seem to vary a lot between sources. Pause that. Um, I, I have noticed that playback freezes up sometimes when playing MP3s from the USB stick. It doesn't seem very reliable. I can't say for sure if it's the head unit or the stick, but the, the stick does seem to work fine with my computers. Uh, playing MP3s from a CD-ROM works in a similar way. We can switch over to the CD. How's that? If you do listen to radio, the HD radio receiver is definitely nice. We can go ahead and switch over to that.
The digital transmissions not only increase the sound quality, but also allow broadcasters to provide additional channels offering content that you can't get on an analog radio. Uh, and get this, not only can you get digital FM stations, but this radio can also receive digital AM. Switch over to a, a digital AM station and show that off. It'll start out in analog, but then switch over to the... Uh, yep, it just switched into digital. Uh, showing the track information. Turn the volume down. Uh, this is actually very interesting because here in, in the Denver area, there are a few AM stations that play cool stuff like obscure music that you'd never hear on FM. Uh, and the digital transmission means they actually sound good, unlike regular AM. It works great when the car is stationary, but unfortunately, I've no I found that AM signals can be quite fickle when driving around, so the radio will end up switching between digital and analog, which is really annoying. Uh, this head unit also supports several other features. Uh, you can attach an iPhone or iPod via USB. Uh, there's supposedly a Pandora feature if you're into Pandora. It can interface with a Sirius XM satellite radio. There's some fancy DSP features I haven't messed with. You can even send an SMS text message from the stereo's controls. Why you would ever want to do such a thing, I have no idea. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, David, these features are nice, but what can you tell me about the sound fidelity? And does it deliver enough watts for my speakers? Or will I need an external amp to get the boom, boom, boom while I'm cruising down Main Street? And to that I say, I have no clue about any of that stuff. I'm totally the wrong person to ask, sorry. Uh, really, the worst thing about this head unit is, is the same as every other head unit I've ever used. The user interface absolutely stinks. It feels like something from the 1980s. Uh, changing sources is awkward, navigating MP3s is horribly clunky, and many tasks require that you wait on these little transitional animations, you know, before hitting the next button, uh, which is absolutely what you don't want when you're trying to keep your eyes on the road. I, I think that car stereos are in the same situation today that cell phones were in back in 2006, before Apple and Google turned that market upside down. There's a lot of really clunky products that the incumbents have little motivation to improve. The car stereo market is just begging for someone who really knows what they're doing to enter the game and totally mop up. As a consumer electronics software engineer, I know that these devices can be so much better. If you're a manufacturer and you think you're ready to change the game, have your people call my people. We'll talk. The good thing is, if I just leave the head unit in Bluetooth mode and use my phone to do everything else, it all works great. So if you're looking to buy a new head unit today and can't wait for the industry to evolve, this unit is a pretty decent buy. Thanks for watching.